Pisani here. We're at the BTIG 17th Charity Day event. Now, this is an event where BTIG, BTIG donates all of its commissions to charity. And everyone is here. We have celebrities from all over the place. Barbara Corcoran was just here. Mike Novogratz was here. Eli Manning, CeCe Sabathia, President Clinton was just walking around, shaking everybody's hands like he always does. He works the room. Nobody works the room like he does. And people are donating uh, here for uh, their charity, showing up, doing an honorary trade or so. We have Robin Arzon here with us as well. She's an American ultra marathon runner and an author of the book, Shut Up and Run. She's also the vice president of fitness programming and instructor at Peloton. She's also an influencer. I want to talk to you about what that means, but welcome, Robin. Thanks for having me. This is an exciting day. Yep, very nice to meet you. Now, everyone's here representing a charity. Before we get going, tell me about your charity, what you're here representing. I'm here representing Poderistas. It's a digital platform in 501c3 that is meant to amplify the voice of Latinas. I'm a proud Latina, and um, it was co-founded in part by Eva Longoria and America Ferrara. And uh, it's really fortunate to get involved with that organization and their nonpartisan efforts. That's wonderful. And if it's a little noisy in here, it's because there's all sorts of celebrities sitting around. Where everybody's chumming around, palling around, uh, and chatting. So the noise is part of the fun overall. You have an amazing story. You really do. Now, you were a corporate lawyer more than 20-some years ago. I was. Uh, and then in 2002, you had an incident uh, downtown that was changed your life. Yeah. Briefly, what happened to you? Uh, well, my corporate law office was actually in this very building. Building. So I'm literally really? walking in my old footsteps. Um, but yeah, I really transitioned. I found movement to heal through trauma. I was held at gunpoint when I was entering my senior year at NYU. And that trauma ended up becoming an inflection point in my life where I decided I could turn pain into power. And that was how I did in architecting my new life as a wellness leader. Yeah, and uh, by, by, by hostage, I mean, you were held at gunpoint as a hostage. Yeah, yeah, right? no, it was a very serious situation. Um, obviously covered by the news and, and the NYPD were involved and I became a, a student hostage negotiator with the police outside and yeah, wouldn't wish that on anybody. And through that, you you figured a, a, a transition the way, as a, partly as a way to, to, to heal, right? Now you, yeah. you reached out to John Foley. Uh, Foley was the CEO of, of Peloton at the time. This was what, 2014 as I as Yeah, I, I was about two years into the year into Peloton and I reached out cold to the company and I said, hey, let's work together. <laughs> and you, you joined as an instructor and then in 2016 you pr promoted the vice president. That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. And what was that path like with Peloton? You know, it's scrappy. It's, you know, dreamers who are willing to hustle. And I was able to marry my corporate background with my love of fitness. And I'm still part of the content team nearly 10 years later. Yeah, you're part, you're like a big star in the Peloton circuit. <laughs> I have friends that say, oh, I, I, I'm saying, I'm going to go interview this woman, Robin Arson. Oh, we, we love, we know she's a big star. Uh, and you're like a master class instructor, right? I am. Yeah, what? I have a master class on mental toughness. Right. So what, what is it? What's it take to keep people motivated these days? How do you keep that going? We see all the Peloton ads because they run them on CNBC. Well, motivation, people, is, going. motivation is fleeting. I like to, to go under the hood and see like what habits are people building, what processes are people architecting in their lives. And I really believe in changing belief systems. Like It's not about one workout. It's about what that 30 minutes or 45 minutes might do for the rest of the of the time in someone's day. And, and you've got all sorts of little spin-offs. Of course, she's not intent to just be a master class instructor. You you founded the Swagger Society as, yes. as well. It's a, a lifestyle membership club and yeah, uh, and Web three. Yep. You've got a a self empowerment journal coming out. I love this phrase, self empowerment journal called Welcome Hustler. <laughs> it's coming in. Is it coming in September or later? Yeah, so it's it's available for pre order now, but it's it's uh, an empowerment journal infused with my mantras, my prompts. I did a four-part audit when I was leaving corporate law into wellness, and it's kind of in my, you know, you get to peek into my process of how to pivot. This is what it's like to be an influencer these days here. <laughs> so, and you are an influencer. You were, na you were named um, in 2020 one of the most influential people on Fortune Magazine's 40 Under 40 list. 2021, you were uh, the first ever recipient of uh, Glamour Magazine's Daring to Disrupt Award. This word, influencer, I don't like it anymore. It was kind of cool like five or six years ago. Oh, influencer. And now sort of everybody's an influencer. But what? tell me, what does it take to be an influencer? How does it evolve?
involving? What do you have to do to remain an influencer? Does it? I think it involves um, speaking your truth even when your voice shakes. I think that influence and authenticity are buzzwords. They get thrown a lot yeah. around a lot in marketing decks. But when you are living it, I like to say I don't practice what I preach. I preach what I practice. And I found a community with, within which that resonates. Um, I like smashing boxes and smashing ceilings and then one day you realize that the ceiling is the floor and then you can bring other people with you and i think that's influence yeah that word authenticity is a word that bothers me a little bit because it implies there's a lot of people who are not authentic and in fact we're all in a way we're all actors to a certain extent though yeah. so how do you how do you keep dragging all these people along with you it seems the motivation is the hard part well, the, the role of the influence seems to keep changing it does it's ever evolving so is the landscape of business of tech of everything um, I prefer alignment to authenticity because alignment presumes that you understand your value system you understand your self-defined finish line and everything you're doing is in search of that you know self-defined North Star and I think when we live in alignment, we know when we're out of alignment. It's in our gut, it lives in our body, it's when our character feels ick. And uh, I'm allergic to that, <laughs> misalignment. How would you describe the physical health of America? Is it getting, uh, you know, I'm in the financial business and we've been, I've been doing this for 30 years and I don't know if the financial health of America is a lot better. I think it's somewhat more improved. I think young people are saving more. Yeah. But how about the the physical health of people in the last 10, 20 years? Do you think it's improving? I don't mean I ultra marathoners. Yeah. I mean like your average person. Are they healthier, better? I, I hope so. I think we've democratized um, at least some literacy around these movement concepts. Movement will always be a modality for healing and mental health. And I think, you know, mindfulness, if speaking of buzzwords, is something that people are kind of getting an understanding around. And I don't care what somebody's entry point is whether it's a Peloton class, an ultra marathon, or walking your dog around the block. I want people moving. Um, and I do think that that's increasing, not as fast as I would like, but listen, that's what I'm here for. It is encouraging to hear, particularly for older people, I'm almost 70, uh, the studies about just brisk walking. Yes. Uh, you know, th that's somebody, a 70-year-old, get out, get out, walk briskly for 20 yes. minutes a day. Yes. And that can make a notable difference. You don't have to, you know, be an ultra marathoner. No, and be consistency in over intensity. That was my mantra when I was postpartum with my first baby. I'm not pregnant with my second. And it's all about little by little amounting to a lot. So five, 10 minutes a day consistently consistently could you know start to steer that ship in direction of your north star. Uh, you're, you're, congratulations Thank on the you. child. You have a two-year-old right on I top do. of that as well. Yes. What a lot of projects you've got going. Listen I'm all about the hustle. It's my favorite word. <laughs> In a sincere way. Yes, and, you, and she says it sincerely. She gets away with saying, most people say, I got a hustle going. It sounds kind of corny. I, I love but it. Her, it's very sincere. Robin Arzon, thank you so much for, for joining us. Me, and everybody here, we're at BTIG's charity day all day. All sorts of hold up celebrities. You can hear them in the background here. I'll grab a few more and put them up on CNBC.com. Everybody have a healthy, happy, and safe trading day.